<clears throat> Hello everyone, this is Sagar Shah and today I am doing a summary video on round 3.1 of the World Cup 2019. Only two Indian players are left uh, in the fray, that's Hari Krishna and Vidit Gujarati. So, not uh, really great that we started with 10 and we are down to 2 but these are two of our strongest players and there was a lot of hope from them but both of them lost their games in round 1 which was quite a big set, uh, setback to our uh, challenge at the World Cup but still not all hope is lost if they win their games today uh, against Alexienko, Hari Krishna wins against Alexienko and Vidit against Wesley so we will be back. So they will be they will go into the tie breaks. So let me see uh, and greet all of you who are online right now. So a few of the people who whom I can see here are Prisha Savant, Siddhant Vasishta, tribute to Big Live, Usha Pal, Swagatam Ghosh, Atharvatare. So welcome everyone, and uh, I would love to interact with all of you and talk to you through the live chat so if you have any questions or whatever questions I ask you can reply in the chat below. Uh, what we'll do over here is we are going to go through two of the games first of Hari Krishna because that one was really very instructive I feel that Hari Krishna is an excellent positional player a wonderful end game expert and to beat him like Alexienko did in this game was simply tremendous. Uh, Alexienko is uh, 22 years old. He's from Russia and he's one of the biggest talents of Russian chess. Uh, 2671. I read somewhere that he's won three uh, times Chigorin Masters, uh, this Chigorin Memorial in 2015, 16, and 17. So it's a very strong event and to win that back to back for three years is really great. Okay, so let's have a look at the game. Uh, Hare Krishna was black and Alexienko was white and began with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, castles, knight f6, d3, and d6. Now, when I was, uh, you know, learning chess and about these openings, I used to find the the Italian or you can say this uh, Gaiko Piano or Gioco Piano to be very boring. It, it's like, you know, this pawn against this pawn, this pawn is here, then there are two knights, two bishops also symmetrically placed. What's going on? But uh, over the years, you start to develop more and more insights and you understand that this is a very subtle opening and I'm trying to, I'll try to do that in this video because it's very difficult to learn this opening through lines. You know, white sometimes goes h3, then he plays sometimes rook e1, sometimes he goes knight d2. Of course, the pawn is always on c3, but knight d2, f1, sometimes he goes a4, knight a3, knight c2, sometimes he goes b4. So there are so many things that are and, and when does white choose something, when does black choose something, we will try to study it in this um, in this right now the video. I have uh, Swagatam who uh, Dastidar who says uh, Alexienko is Swidler second also, okay, I, I was not aware of that so that is a very important point. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so here C3 was played and Hare Krishna played a6. Now whatever moves come to your mind here which are normal have been played before. So for example if you think castles this has been played. If you think about h6 trying to stop bishop g5 in this variation this also has been played before. And if you also think about a move like uh, bishop e6 it's also possible. I'm not saying it's good here but it's possible to play. Although uh, I think you have to be always careful when you make this move that after takes, takes, there could be queen to b3 uh, creating a double attack here and here. a6 is fine, you know, you are making a square for your bishop here and looks good. And black, uh, white played here a4 
this is usually just about gaining space on the queen side a4 you want to play b4 at some point sometimes you can even go a5 as you will see in the game now h6 this has been played a lot by karyakin so this is what was played by hari krishna here and then went rook to e1 now the main idea of rook e1 is that at some point you want to play d4 and you want this pawn to be protected on e4 so that's normal castles h3 and here rook e8 was played now one of the changes that we are seeing in uh, italian is that black many times has started playing the move a5 earlier this was not very popular uh, in fact the most recent game is carlson versus wesley so in which this line was played at the sinkfield cup and then after knight d2 bishop e6 uh, bb5 knight a7 d4 knight takes this is well known theory you know uh, in this position we reached over here and wesley so played b6 in this position and landed in quite a quite some trouble because carlson went uh, g3 knight h4 knight g2 knight e3 and put his knight on d5 so maybe you guys have seen this game it was a very well played game but uh, hari krishna said i don't really want to play a5 in this position i'll just go rook to e8 and rook e8 has a simple idea that when you play bishop e6 you want to take back bishop takes with the rook that is the simple point and here uh, the move that has been regularly played is knight d2 but a5 was played by alexienko and this is a novelty in the game so this was the move and now i would like you guys to take some time here okay and to come up with what would you play with black so write down your answers in the live chat what do you think should black play meanwhile i'll try to interact with all the questions i have received until now okay so sonal kosti hi welcome to the show parmar bhagya welcome uh, Shanta Kumar good good la welcome to the show Alka Gupta great to have you uh, yes Sushma Dwivedi says bad day for the Indians yesterday definitely it was a bad day but I will, at the end we'll we'll discuss about it what are our chances today uh, Shant Kumar good la says thank you very much Sagar the way you explain in the videos is awesome it's very useful for amateur players like us that's great wonderful to know Amar Singha is from Malaysia welcome Amar to to the to the show okay uh, i see there are a few moves swagatham says knight to e7 okay that's interesting move uh, shushma dwivedi bishop e3 i mean maybe bishop e6 is what you want to say shri shrinivasan venkat ramani says bishop e6 here okay bishop a7 says gaurav mahajan all right gaurav mahajan by the way usually gives the right answer gaurav that's great uh, floris dulard says b5 okay that's another move so let me just mark the moves 2 3 4 and who else pradeep kanetkar says bishop a7 aryan goswami hi welcome uh, here it's black to move guys so so no white moves to be mentioned here okay so first of all let's look at swagatham's uh, option he said knight e7 and here one of the thumb rules in such positions uh, is that you really don't want white to go d4 and not be able to maintain oops not be able to maintain this e5 pawn so for example if i could go back bishop a7 uh, in this position then this would have been fine because let's say my knight is on c6 i am controlling that e5 point but when my knight is on e7 here i think you just lose a pawn after takes takes and knight e5 there's also pressure on f7 this is what you don't want so in a way you must take on d4 and then after cd i guess bishop b4 at least gaining a tempo 
and then uh, knight c3. This, oops, sorry, knight c3. And this position, I feel that white should be slightly better, although here there is this move d5, which is coming in with a tempo, and maybe it's possible to play like this. Mm, you have to check. But this is the general rule of thumb that you don't really want to allow d4 when you can't hold the e5 square in the Italian. Okay. Yeah, bishop a7 was what Hari Krishna played in the game. Uh, and uh, possible, this was not a bad move at all as we will see. Knight d7 uh, is what Srinivasan Venkata Ramani says. But then to get f5 is not easy. There is already this pin. So you must play king h8 but then f7 hangs so if you want to play king f8 okay this is not great so maybe not knight d7 over there d5 here i think doesn't really work uh, first of all i can take here on d5 knight takes d5 and the usual trick here is to play d4 because if you take here, then I can go rook e8 and win the knight on d5. Otherwise, your e5 pawn is in trouble. And this is why d5 doesn't work in such positions. Okay, so tribute to big life. This is the problem. Now, all the people here like Anch Chess, Shushma Dvivedi, and all those who have mentioned bishop to e6. I guess this is the move that Hare Krishna really wanted to play. Because with this, after bishop e6, rook e6, he has solved some of his problems. He's finished his development and his pieces are well placed. But the thing which he was afraid of, and I guess you should also be afraid of in this position, is d4. Did you consider this move? If you, if you did not consider, uh, then, then that's not great because now d5 is threatened and you're going to lose a piece so after takes you must take take back bishop b4 and here if black white uh, tries to defend this rook somehow then e4 is hanging like rook into e4 so you must play d5 here which is the only move and then after bishop into e1 now if d into e6 then you have bishop a5 with a better position for black so you must take on e5 here, uh, e1, and now after rook e4, dc6, bc6. I think this is the position that Hari Krishna should have gone for. Uh, it is white should have a small edge. He can go knight to c3, get his knight back, develop his bishop, and somehow these two pieces are sometimes more powerful than a rook and two pawns in such a position, middle game position. But I think black has his chances. He can put his pawn on c5 and control the center. And overall, it looks great. I hope you guys uh, agree with me. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the reason why here bishop e6 would have been good. The other move suggested by someone was b5. But after ab, already you can see either you take with the c pawn then your bishop will get trapped with b4. I mean, already some troubles there. And if you take with the bishop, then you have already problems with the a6 pawn, which is very weak. So I could even think of playing b4 and fixing that sort of uh, something like, you know, a5, b5. And white has really a very good position here. So that's why b5 is not really great. Uh, bishop a7 was played by Hare Krishna. And here, I like the move played by Kirill Alexienko. He went queen to b3, attacking the pawn on f7. So now, my question to you is, what should black play here? Okay, black to move. Once again, uh, yes, uh, all those who said bishop e6, if, if you uh, considered all the moves that we said, I, I talked about, well done. And now it's once again your turn with black. What would you play here? Okay, Aniket Gavit, hi, welcome to the show. Uh, ah, okay, there is one more point which I want to mention here, uh, which is after bishop e6, if you take, 
and fe6 yeah this is to be considered but then you really don't want your rook on e8 then it's better to have the rook on f8 and here after d4 i think or even b4 white should have already a very very uh, pleasant position this structure in general is okay but here with rook on e8 it doesn't seem right okay bishop a7 queen b3 now what should you play here with black okay so queen d7 says Srinivas okay queen d7 you block your bishop uh, queen e7 Mahavir queen e7 Gaurav Mahajan uh, Aryan Goswami queen e7 rook f8 says Sanket Vashishta uh, sorry uh, Siddhant Vasishta Ganesh Gaulkar says Bishop e6 but Ganesh you have to look at your b7 pawn that's hanging so be careful um, yeah everyone feels Queen e7 here I am not so sure about this move this is also what Hari Krishna played in the game Queen e7 let me see if someone can come up with the right move here Ujwal Bansal uh, has come up with rook e7 and I feel that this should be the better move here rook to e7 then queen e7 the point I'll try to discuss this because let's say you go bishop e3 like in the game then I take you take and I play bishop now rook to b8 my idea is I want to go bishop e6 but then b7 is hanging so I would like I'll play rook b8 and now you go uh, in the game in this position when the queen was on e7 white went d4 and here it's simply impossible because I take take and I just win the pawn here on e4 so you develop your knight instead of playing d4 and I play bishop e6 you take I take you play d4 I go back and this position is definitely slightly better for white because he has these two central pawns while I am slightly in a defensive mode but it's fine you know like if he goes d5 97 c4 he is getting space but you could also think about starting your own play with knight g6 knight h5 knight f4 maybe trying for f5 and so on so this is definitely something uh, that black should have thought about rook e7 these are small subtle moves so you understand these points in the italian why they are so critical they are small little moves but they make a huge difference after queen e7 d4 was played uh, sorry first d4 is not coming because it's lost so first you exchange the pieces takes takes and now rook b8 was played so that the bishop can develop and now came d4 and suddenly you realize that black is really really uh, in trouble because you cannot play bishop e6 d5 you lose a piece and in general you would really like to take this but taking on e4 is impossible because of knight to c3 and then if bishop f5 you have bd5 strong move and you lose a piece on e4 so because of these reasons Hare Krishna after d4 was under big big pressure I hope you are understanding the subtleties over here okay uh, Queen is trapped after rook e7. No, queen is not trapped. I mean, rook e7 just somehow was much better. Okay, uh, Amok Panchagati says, I want to donate some money. How do I do it? Well, Amok, there is a super chat. You know, there's a dollar sign below uh, in, the, in the chat box over there. And you can just write it over there. Uh, the, you can just click on it and donate some money. That would be very nice. Okay. Uh, okay so now black to move yes this is where I, I want to, you to think actually about the difficulties that Hare Krishna had because you know when you are looking at the game you will be like okay it's just uh, normal position equal pawns 8 pawns each one pair of pieces exchange but when you actually start looking at this seriously is when you realize that what should black play here now suppose you are in black here what would you play 
ओके श्रीनिवासन वेंकटरामन नी सेज बी फाइव परमर भग्या आल्सो सेज बी फाइव एनी अदर सजेशंस फ्रॉम यू गाइस हियर नाइट ई एट और नाइट डी एट यू वांट टू प्ले ओके नाइट डी एट इंटरेस्टिंग बट व्हाट्स द फ्यूचर फॉर योर नाइट या यू वांट टू गो टू फ्रॉम नाइट डी एट टू ई सिक्स आई प्रेज्यूम ओके दिस इज हाउ यू want to take your knight so let's say you go knight d8 and i play d5 suddenly it looks like your knight is on a bad spot also there's a tactical idea i guess with bishop a6 which should be considered here and then you lose a pawn because the pawn is pinned so not knight c6 okay uh gaurav mahajan says b5 bam okay b5 is not a bam move but b5 okay queen f8 rohit deoli yeah queen f8 knight a7 yeah all the people who are suggesting the movement of this knight should definitely take into account that this pawn is hanging here okay mm. yeah bd7 maybe but again it's passive in general you you are understanding that to find a good move for black is difficult and so hari krishna lashed out with b5 okay and this move b5 i would say is not great but it's like what to do yeah i mean i have no better suggestions a b6 was played and once again my question to you is how should black recapture the b6 pawn how would you recapture b6 or a, a b5 both are kind of similar how should uh, black continue in this position after a b6 okay so as i wait for your moves uh, we are closing in on nearly 100 people uh, on the live show right now so that's good uh, i i am unable to make prior announcements so it's wonderful of you guys to come at short notice um yeah swagatam ghosh says there are no good moves for in a bad position yes and and the point is you don't even feel that the position is so bad only when you once start thinking about it you start to realize that ah this position is not so great cb6 says gaurav mahajan sushma dwivedi says rook b6 ganesh golkar says rook into b6 स्वागतम घोष सेज रुक बी सिक्स प्रशांत सी बी सिक्स उज्ज्वल रुक बी सिक्स सो हियर वी हैव अ क्लियर कट टू ग्रुप्स वन हु सेज रुक बी सिक्स द अदर वन हु सेज सी बी सिक्स बाय द वे आई होप दैट ऑल दोज आर सेइंग रुक बी सिक्स आर नॉट सेइंग इट बिकॉज आफ्टर सी बी सिक्स यू लूज अ पॉन टू बिशअप इन टू ए सिक्स दिस इज नॉट ग्रेट बिकॉज आई थिंक इन दिस पोजिशन you can just play rook a8 and this uh, bishop is going to be trapped soon because let's say you take on b6 then i can just go knight b8 and i can trap this bishop because it's pinned here here so that's not the point okay cb6 doesn't lose the a6 pawn yet okay so rook b6 is what i would suggest that hari krishna should have gone with activity at the cost of spoiling his structure say after queen c2 i definitely think white is better but still somehow this rook got activated a bit and okay you can play this position it's not the end of the world but he took cb6 and here uh, a very interesting point was made today morning i was uh, speaking with grandmaster pravin thipse from mumbai who is a very strong gm and he said if you look at it you will realize that white has exchanged his a pawn for black c pawn okay and this is never good this is strategically bad for black in such positions because the structure in itself these pawns like this against these pawns here is bad so that's the reason why you should have uh black should not have reached a position where he has to go for this
yeah uh, someone said here after who is it um ed amir says that here bishop a6 rook a8 queen b6 knight b8 and take here but then i take here you take on b8 oops sorry just mouse slip you take here but then also b1 is hanging so it doesn't work Yeah, Hari Krishna lost this game. So knight bd2 was played uh, by Alexienko in this position. b5, knight, bishop f1, queen c7 and now you will see how white simply crushed in this position. First d5, pushing the knight back. Now c4, very well done. b4 was played by Hari Krishna because if you take, take knight c4, is already bad this knight is a monster here attacking the d6 pawn also at some point could jump into c6 a6 pawn is weak so all in all bad position b4 queen to a4 knight d7 queen a5 you exchange the queens and here it seems like black could jump in with knight to c5 but after knight b3 he will anyway have to exchange this and you see how these both the pawns are tremendously weak next move i come rook a4 and i pick this up and you can't even stop it with bd7 because the a6 pawn is hanging so this is how uh, black has actually put white uh, white has actually put black in a complete some kind of a zook zoang here what to do nothing much and so hari krishna once again had to go for some kind of a rash decision f5 but you know knight b3 takes knight d2 he wants to put a knight on e4 and positionally just better finally wanting some activity he went bishop f5 bishop c2 but Hare Krish, uh, here a pawn was lost and then the rook was activated knight d4 rook a7 rook f8 rook other rook comes in to attack d6 pawn you defend it but rook b6 rook b7 now g7 is hanging only way is g5 you see the bishop is controlling this square so it's not a mate yet but now is my final question in this game what should white play okay okay kavyan shagarwal asks how many indians left in the world cup yes only two hari krishna and with it and they are on thin ice today if they even draw their games both are eliminated both have to win Praveena Matre, welcome to the show. Okay, so after g5, what do you play here? For white. All those who have some suggestions can do so in the chat. Um, c5 says Srinivas Venkataramani, well done Srinivasan. This is a beautiful move and you found it so quickly. Ujwal Bansal says f3. This is also a very logical move, not at all bad. Uh, so that's good. But c5 is excellent because after take, you put your bishop on c4, you're threatening d6, the rook will soon come here. It's, it's big trouble. It's a very good pawn sacrifice. Uh, f3 followed by knight e4 is a good idea. I agree with you, but this is even stronger. Rook f6. Rook e7, king f8, I take on e5, rook f7, rook a6, king g7, and now after f3, d6 was played, attacking the rook, and c5 pawn fell. And you will see that Hare Krishna usually puts up a very good fight, but here there was simply nothing, you know, take on b3, and he simply landed in this rook and game, two pawns down. And within a couple of moves, he resigned h4, king h2, and rook to b4. h4 is hanging, and Hare Krishna resigned. I, I want you to understand what a very good positional effort this was by the Russian player Alexienko. And at the same time, uh, Hare Krishna didn't play the opening well. He had chances to improve at many places. But this Italian, you know, it's such a, such a... Um, 
it's very deceptive opening you feel like nothing's going on and suddenly one break like d4 comes at the right moment and you are in a bad position so keep in mind these things which we have discussed when to play bishop e6 when not to do so you don't really want to exchange the a pawn for the c pawn and all of these things and i hope this will be useful to you okay nandan adeshara says how to decide between two good moves this is the basic problem of chess you know <laughs> that you have to decide and uh, well you have to weigh the pros and cons you have to analyze variations you have to look at the possibilities and then decide uh, based on that okay let's go to now with its game okay because uh, this is somehow the next thing that we would like to look at in this because with it was playing uh, in this game against Wesley so and this game was really very interesting because with it got a very very equal position uh, from the opening and then all of a sudden uh, he was in in a rook and game where he had to struggle so let's quickly look at this game and then see what happened okay so with it was black here and it was the ragozin queen a4 knight c6 e3 castles queen c2 and this is all well known with it has played this before against voitacek uh, in 2019 so a3 bishop d6 rook d1 and this is where i found something very fishy happening in the game with it took 26 minutes for his next move so bishop d7 is what he played and this was exactly what he played against Wojtacek. So why did he think for 26 minutes? It's just uh, beyond me. Maybe he was trying to think of his analysis. He couldn't remember it and he played bd7. h3 uh, was played in the game. In the game with Wojtacek, bishop c1 happened and then after dc4, bishop c4, h6, castles, e5, black had already equalized. So this is what Vidit is really good at. He can play his openings really well. And he, with black, he doesn't really try for anything spectacular, but very solid uh, in that sense. H3, and here H6 was played. This is a useful move in general, but there is a better move for, white, uh, for black in this position. I would like you to think about it. Not exactly better than h6, but I feel more active. So black to play. What do you do here? So all those who are here could, could let me know in the live chat as to what should black play in this position. Yeah, Swagatam Ghosh says, so played a superb endgame. I agree with you. So played beautifully in the endgame. But I also feel that Vidit was not in his element. He was not sure about things at many places. He could have played much more resolutely, but he was not taking the strong decisions. Uh, so after h3, what should you do here? Okay, we have Srinivasan Venkataramani and Anurag Dev who say e5. Well done, guys, those who found the move e5. I think this is a powerful move uh, because it really clarifies the situation in the center and also makes the king on e1 look very vulnerable. You are asking a question, what is the king doing there? Okay, yes, the knight on c6 looks bad here. I mean, if you can move the knight and pu push c5, that would be great. But the point is, if you get in e5, then the knight is perfect on c6. Let's say if CD, this should be your main worry, but then ED and suddenly you see the rook is beautifully placed opposite the king, DC6, DC3 and now if you take on D7, there is a check coming in between. So you take bishop C3, bishop C6 and this is just equal. Uh, I think with it should have gone for this. Also after E5, if D into E5, I take knight E. Uh, 5, 95, rook e5 and once again this is sort of equal. So h6 was played, still not nothing bad in this, c5, bishop f8 and 
white went knight to e5 here and this is where Vidit started to play really well. He took on e5, d e5, knight to e4, sacrificing a pawn but this is just temporary. You can't really take right now on e4 because after bishop c6 and queen g5, black has excellent counterplay. So, so played bishop a5, looking at the c7 pawn here. But after queen c8, another powerful move, g4 was played because you want to put your bishop on g2 and pick up this pawn. Now bishop c6, bishop g2, and here it seems like the e4 pawn is falling, but with it finds the right way to equalize this position. So it's uh, black to move here. What would you play here? Okay. This is black's, black to move in this position. How, how do you continue? Nandan Ashera says Greek gift sacrifice could be thought about. Yeah, in that position, perhaps. Yes, it's possible. But what do you do here? Okay, Rook D8 says Bijit Chetia. Siddhant Vasishta says F5. F5 looks a bit too weakening, I, I would say. But because E into F6, you have to consider this move. Um, Bishop e7, you have to be careful of losing this pawn without any compensation. So, like I can go b4 at some point and pick up this pawn, perhaps not so sure, but I don't really want to trap my bishop. But this you have to be careful. What Vidit did here was very smart. He played rook d8. And the main point is that if you castle, there's a powerful move here, rook to d5. Now I'm looking at the e5 pawn and c5 pawn and if you take on d5, I take back ed and I have these super strong pawns in the center. So this was with its very nice idea and also after taking on d8, what you realize is that black is starting to get his counterplay. You see he took on e4 but now bishop c5, queen b7, rook b8. If you take on a6, I have queen d5 followed by rook takes b2, which is great compensation. And after queen c7, take take, rook takes b2. Uh, black is pawned down, but these pawns are going nowhere actually. And so castles was played here and now it's black to move. How do you equalize this position? without any difficulties. It's black's move here. What do you do here? So with it played rook c2 here, but I want you to find something better. What should black do? <coughs> so we have uh, well over 100 people here who are in the chat. So I would like all of you to give your best in this position and think because you see it's positions like these where you don't think well and you say okay anything draws is which will give you the biggest trouble and that's what happened with Vidit. If he would calculate things accurately at this position maybe the game would have ended in the next 5 or 10 moves but because he didn't really play uh, the most precise moves the game went on for another 55 moves and then he lost. So, bishop into a3, all those who suggest here, Swagatam, uh, Rajesh Nair, Srinivasan, Indrajit Patil, all of you who suggest bishop into a3, tell me what are you going to do after the move rook to a1. What is the cleanest way to equalize in this position? There could be two or three good moves here, but I would love to hear the cleanest way according to you. So, after rook a1, rook b3 says ed amir, possible, this is definitely a possibility here, but this is not the cleanest way in my opinion, because first of all, uh, you have to be careful about bishop d6 move in this position, because after ed6, 
the pawn is passed and also a6 is hanging and secondly there is something stronger if someone finds this move i would be very happy here to see that rook b3 first everyone is rook b3 so rook b3 is the lazy move you know you see your bishop is hanging you defend it that's the lazy way to do things but that's not how super gms function they find the best options in every position here after rook a1 what do you do anup datta is the one who's found the right move that's well done anup if uh, the right move is bishop to e7 excellent the only one who's found this the point is after rook a6 you put your bishop to h4 and there is just no way to defend the pawn on f2 right so well done very well done by anup and this is how vidit could have got an easy draw but he played here rook to c2 and then after bishop d6 takes takes rook d2 now d6 is hanging so rook b1 he won back the pawn and at this point i thought this will be an easy draw you know this this is not going anywhere but then wesley somehow was in a big fighting mood here he played rook to a7 and he told with it i'm going to play till the end of this game till just kings are left you defend this i have a slightly more active rook and i'm going to play on so here vidit played king f6 once again i think f5 would have been more active you then put your king on f6 push your pawn to g5 would have been easier but he played king f6 and now wesley went h4 slowly and steadily improving his position king went to g2 g5 king g3 and once this move g5 was played uh, the problem is if you take gh i have king h4 and the king is very well placed and the other problem is that i could play h5 at some point and this pawn could become a weakness so these are all minute decisions in the end game but they lead to great trouble at some point now here once again if it's black to move what would you do here black's move with it played rook to c2 but i would like you to come up with something better what should black play here so you see that white has two pawn islands while black has three these are three islands and that's why white has definitely chances to press here but black can improve his position over here how should he continue <coughs> so all of you here in the chat put yourself in with its shoes feel the pressure that you are facing a super gm and try to come up with a good idea f5 says srinivasan venkata ramani uh, and indrajit patel well done guys f5 is what makes complete sense because you just want to exchange more and more pawns this is just simple and let's say after a5 you also have a threat by the way to play rook c4 and take this so after a5 take take e5 i think black should hold this pretty easily okay in the game rook c2 was played king g3 rook went back and now you can see how super gms actually grind such positions they don't make any decisions quickly they just keep moving around and round and you know king f2 king g2 king g3 make your opponent suffer in such positions you see how he's just moving his king around and now rook to d7 was played and i can guarantee you that if this rook d7 was played a few moves ahead like near the 40 move mark then with it had more time on the clock but when this was played it was already 53 moves with it was already down on time so he couldn't calculate rook c5 move here because now a5 is hanging and white has to play rook d5 you take take and simply play king to f8 and i'm coming here to pick up this pawn so you must either go king h4 h5 take this 
or you play f4 in this position. So if you play f4, then a uh, very important move here is f6, take take, king f3, king e7 and we have a classic case of mind squares. King e4 is met with king d6 and if you stop yourself from going to e4 with king e3, I will also play king d7. Both are not going to step on these squares and it will be a draw. You move here, I move here, you move here, I move here and a draw. So uh, the other option was king to h4 but then I go e7, king h5, king d6, takes, takes, king g7, king e6 and once again after let's say something like g5 you go king f5, take this, take this and you see this variation king c6, king e5. So Vidit had really a very good drawing chance here straight away going into the pawn endgame but he was passive and after rook d5, Wesley so now this king e8 is definitely bad. You can keep your king on g7, you went king e8, king h4, king h5, king g7, g5, takes, takes and king is coming to f5 winning the e5 pawn. So rook h6, king f5, you take on e5 and now a6 pawn is hanging. Now there are some intricacies here in this end game as well. I won't go into it, it so deep but the point is that white is winning here because after this he has he's going to bring his king here remove his rook out and push his pawn towards queening and he will lose the e pawn in this position but it doesn't matter because his a pawn is just very quick and Wesley so showed phenomenal technique here he blocked with the check and now came a very nice waiting move rook to c5 so that when his king goes here, now he can block the checks with his rook. a7, rook e8, king b7, king g5 and check, take here. And here with it did something interesting. He played king to f4, which is like shouldering, trying to shoulder the white king. After king b6 came king to e3. And here's my final question for the day. How should you continue with white? And if you get this answer, then you are really having very good endgame technique because this is a very common trick in rook versus pawn endgames. How should white continue here? Okay, how should white continue here? You need to find the most accurate way because let's say you play king c5, I go f4, oops, you play king c4, I play f3, you play here. Maybe this is also winning, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but no, check king here. And okay, this is a draw. So you need to make some really important decisions here because your king is sort of blocked out by the white king. King c5, rook e8. All those who suggested rook e8, good job. Because now you make the black king decide. So let's say you played rook f8 here then white will, black will go f4 but if you give a check in between black is in trouble either he has to go in front of his pawn or he must go to d3 and then you attack rook f8 the pawn so now f4 is not coming you go back king c5 f4 king c4 king e3 king here f3 check king goes back and after king d2 king f1 king e3 with it resign the game so this is known as an intermediate check remember this technique it will be very useful for you don't go behind the pawn immediately first a check push the king away make it decide do you want to go in front of your pawn or away from your pawn then behind the pawn play king e4 and then bring your king in this is how you win the game by one tempo okay it was a matter of one tempo and you begin to realize how important it was for Wesley here not to play a8 queen maybe this wins also possibly but because he played rook c8 check and his rook was on the 8th rank he could give a check and bring his rook behind 
So I hope that you enjoyed these two games. We looked at them in quite some depth. They were very subtle, like super GM games. But I hope these explanations helped you to understand them better. Today at 3.30 p.m., Vidit and Hari Krishna will have white pieces and they will face the same opponents, Alexi, uh, Wesley So and Alexienko. And if they draw or lose, they are out of the World Cup. Uh, but if they win, then we'll have the tiebreakers. I have a feeling that they will give it their all. Although beating Wesley So with white, not so easy. I mean, although with it as white, it won't be easy. But Hari Krishna definitely has his chances against the young Alexienko. Let's see what happens. Either way, we'll meet tomorrow once again. So thank you so much. And for all those guys who enjoyed the video, there's a super chat button over there where you can contribute. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the Chess Base India channel, please do so. This is Sagar Shah signing off. Take care.